everybody and welcome back to the channel today we are playing starters order 6 we are firing up our new jumps save so I know a couple of you have been asking about this and wondering when we were gonna go live and uh, the time is now so looking through the horses that I got to begin with I didn't think too much of trial preps we put him up for auction Looking at DJ's Hope, and there's a couple of things to like about him, but no confidence, no finish application. Might as well get rid of him. But the laid-back trait did make me pause. If we had the breeding barn, maybe I would have kept him. Maybe. I made the trot a little bit better, but again, not quite enough. Didn't have the breeding barn to, uh, to keep him around. And Ricky Blue Eyes, decent prospect, no finish application. I'm kind of thinking maybe, just maybe, he would be a good one to sell. Because he might make us money. Now that leaves us with Betcha. Not a bad horse. Not a bad horse at all. And uh, if we can get that potential up, great. Now it is an excitable horse, which will cause problems. That will indeed cause problems. But overall, I think that's not too bad of a horse to start with. And uh, we'll go from there. So we need to name the farm, of course. So let's call it um, Dan Er. Oh, wow, come on. Uh. Show stables. Not too many people might get that joke, but hey, it's kind of for an audience of one. That one might be me, but I find it amusing. So Dan Rog of Show Stables. <laughs> That'll do me. That'll do me. Uh we are kind of up in the northeast of England because that's the only place where I could find you know, a decent amount of courses around us. We're not paying too much for travel. But also, it's only level 2 in terms of expenses. So, that's kind of uh, why we chose that. I have got legends in the game. There's nine legends in here. Denman, Desert Orchid, Bobsworth, Q Card, Long Run, Sprinter Sk uh, Sacra, Silviano Conti, Sayed de Grugi, and Dodging Bullets. So... We do have legends in the game. We're going to see how this all plays out. We'll go to auction on day one. Yeah. So looks like there is a horse for sale. Apart from ours. And one that people are trying to get rid of it seems. So trial prep. How much money are you going to get from this? Half a million would have been lovely. That's what I was thinking. On this one. But we're nowhere near. <laughs> Not even going to get 50 grand. I'm trying to get... Oh, that just stalled instantly. I don't like it when it does that. I'm trying to get up to half a million total. Not half a million for the horses. But we do need to start moving. This might be a decent one made to trot whether it's that laid back disposition or not i i'm really not sure but that puts us in with a shot now especially when ricky blue eyes the one that i thought might earn us the money that's gonna actually go over half a million on its own beautiful beautiful that's why i sold that horse nobody's gonna bid on that one and I'm not going to bid on that one. So that puts us up now at £865,000. That is a great start. You know what? It's so good that I think we might as well now... Yeah. Let's get ourselves an apprentice. Then Carberry will come in. And... Jacob... Jacob might be okay, so we'll autobook Jacob on there. So, we've got a jockey set up, we've got everything else set up. 
Uh, we're not quite ready to run yet. You know, a little short of work. But we'll see how this works out. But to begin with, I think we've got to have the jump scallops. You know, that this is a jump save. That has got to be a priority. All weather dirt will get that going as well. The swimming pool training stalls because starting will be important okay that's 300 grand that's gonna be decent do i want to put the trainers might as well just get those two oops how much is that that's a lot of money it's a lot of money now of course we need at least one horse trailer so we're gonna go pick that up at the same time yeah why not so there we go we got a swimming pool all weather dirt gallops we've got jumps gallops we've got training stalls on-site trainer accommodation which should help out an office building we're going to hire a garden and get the gallop roast to make the place look a little nicer. And uh, a staff accommodation building to help out as well with our single horse trailer to transport. That's going to be okay. So we spent a fair bit of money there, but we're in good place. I think we're in a good, good place. Ooh, excuse me. But I think we will call this one. <sighs> no. Why can't I now rename? There we go. There we are. Danny Girl. Because we're Dan the Rogue of Show Caves and female version of Danny Boy. That's about all I can sort of think of right now. So what are we going to do? Pretty decent stamina. I think I want to try 2 mile 4 to begin with. And I think we might want to just throw in with this bunch and see how she does. It's going to be an interesting opening test. I think that might be a decent option. Not a great option. You know, I don't expect her to come out and win that immediately. But, um... Yeah, th this is kind of the, the testing the water. See where we come out. How well she runs. How she runs. And if that excitability will come back to haunt us. So... Trying to find Danny Girl here, and there we go. She will be the favourite, interestingly enough. Medusa, Yolo Lindy, Big Sky Vicky, Sparkling Rosie, Major Dancer, All That Jazz, The V, Mystical Wishes, Ahead Hanover, and Wildcat Magic. Place your bets now. It doesn't look like we're actually going to be... Uh... Yeah, doesn't look like we're overheated or anything. Tipsters say Danny Girl, 3 out of 5 in the paddock, coping well, excitable not coming in, couple overweight. Might as well put a few each ways and a few wins on that. That's a bit more money at the end than I thought it was going to be. I expected it to keep around 10 then suddenly it jumps up. Gosh, I hope we win, though. I hope we win, though. The amount of money I just put on that horse is crazy. But if we do win, you know, we're going to get a decent chunk of money back. And that was kind of, you know, something I thought that we would be able to do. So, a little bit overcast here, it looks like. But this is just a juvenile race. It's not going to be a very difficult test. Two mile four. Just going to see how she does over that distance. Let's see how Jacob has her run. And it looks like we will start there at the back of the pack in this rundown. 
Major Dancer going to the front with Wildcat Magic, Mystical Wishes and Big Sky Vicky now coming up into fourth place. Medusa just there coming past ahead Hanover. Yolo Lindy is there as well. And it's a decent little jump from ourselves. Nice to see that. All that jazz, the V moving up a little bit as well. Sparkling Rosie at the rear. And it looks like Danny Girl going down into the inside there. Going against the rail here. 17 and a half furlongs. One jump into this. You know, we're approaching jump number two. And so far we are hanging out near the back. Again, a pretty decent jump, gaining a little bit of ground. But again, deciding to run at the rear of the pack, which is a little interesting. 16 furlongs to go now. Major Dancer and Wildcat Magic have not been shaken from the front at all. Big Sky Vicky and Mystical Wishes, those stablemates sitting in third and fourth with Medusa. All that jazz the V just behind. Then down to Yolo Lindy and ahead Hanover. Then Danny Girl leading out Sparkling Rosie at the rear of the field. It's a good jump there from Major Dancer. Not a bad jump by too many people there at all. We didn't jump that particularly well, but Wildcat Ma uh, Magic actually gets past Wildcat Dancer. Moving up into first place. Approaching jump three of eight now. 13 furlongs left to run. And not many people willing to make a move just yet. See us passing the big screen there. Start finish line has been passed once more. 12 furlongs now. We're going to approach this wide turn before we come back to grab ourselves another jump. We are currently sitting in last place on the outside of Sparkling Rosie. A head hangover there on the inside. Now Yolo Lindy moving back to the inside. And then the rest of the field is tightly bunched up with Medusa, all that jazz, the V, Mystical Wishes, Major Dancer, Big Sky, Vicky, and Wildcat Magic now. And it looks like the two stable mates there jump well. We didn't jump very well at the back. But Big Sky, Vicky, and Mystical Wishes there doing very well at the front. Coming up now to nine furlongs. We are at the halfway stage in terms of jumps. We're going to go on to now jump five of eight. And let's see how they do. Decent jump by us, but Wildcat Magic jumps the best at the front, moving back into the lead. And here comes Danny Go a little bit on the outside of Yolo Lindy. Now we are not in last place. We've still got a few horses to pass here. A head hand over and a sparkling rosy right in front of us. We can make some ground up there with a good jump. Maybe we can get past Medusa and all that jazz de vie as well. We don't get a great jump there. Looks like Sparkling Rosie did though. And ourselves and them are moving up from the rear of the field here quite steadily. We're getting on in terms of the jumps. We're coming round this turn again. And we are now moving up the field on the outside. Sparkling Rosie is coming with us. That might be a battle at the end of the race. Four and a half furlongs. And just two jumps to go. Poor jump by us. Poor, poor jump by us there. We seem to hang in the air. Four furlongs. Now we are making our move. As is Medusa with us. Sparkling Rosie just ahead of us. But we are making up so much ground here on the field. And making an impact towards the later stages of this race. We have got one last jump. We are two and a half furlongs away from home. Sparkling Rosie still just ahead of us. We're coming up on the outside here. On this jump. It's a decent jump. Three-way there, Major Dancer, Sparkling Rosie and Danny Girl battling for second place at the moment. Big Sky Vicky as we come down to the final furlong is ahead by a couple of lengths and I think is probably going to keep this one under control. We don't seem to be doing too much yet. Have we got the fight at the line? Sparkling Rosie driving out here is going to keep us away from second place but Danny Girl will pick up third. Big Sky Vicky sits in first place there. A good run start to finish. And that's not too bad. That's not too bad. So each way we did okay. Not really... You know, we, we could have got okay there. We lost a lot of money on the end of it though. That's going to hurt us. 
With Osprey ahead to Sparkling Rosie and Big Sky Vicky, a very, very strong performance there. So I got the distance well and we enjoyed the ground. So we might have to see exactly what we can get done in terms of a few more 2-4s over this season and just see where she goes. Let's get into August. Uh, not August, October, sorry. And see exactly what we can do again so she likes firm ground not sure we can get too much of that there's a juvenile coming up here you know that wouldn't be a bad one I don't think and that's a shorter field Medusa I mean that's that's a field we could probably beat this a short field and it's decent prize money so that's what I'm going to go in for then. Second race of the video. And the second race in Danny Girl's uh, career to date. First one kind of went well, but, you know, the excitable trait didn't kick in. Let's go have a quick look at the auction. Yeah, not really... Not really much there, so... Interesting. So we got 200,000 in the bank. I might be tempted to bet on this one. And there we go. The excitable trait does indeed kick in. Agitated and warm. Very fit prime to go. So not a bad one. Again, not a bad setup. 25. That's about 53 grand there. I'm willing to risk that amount because if it does come in, of course, things are going to be good for us. And so here we are then. We're on the inside behind Yolo Lindy. And a good first jump there. Looks like Wildcat Magic and Macy Ray with a great start there on that first jump as we're downhill to start things off. Medusa and Yolo Lindy just in front of us. All that Jazz Davino passing Ren Jetta. Missy Ray up into second behind Wildcat Magic. 18 furlongs away. And there's the second jump. And, oh, it's not a good jump for us. We're now back by three to four lengths. Maybe more. Not sure if that's lengthening or closing. It looks like it's closing a little bit, but not by much at this stage. But we are in the rear of the field. And that's slightly disappointing. Now, this is a very undulating course. Good jump from us there, and we close half the distance. That is a good sign. 16 furlongs have been passed. We're down now towards the 15 furlong marker, and coming up to jump number four on this very undulating course. Wildcat Magic, a couple of lengths in the lead, where a couple of lengths at the rear, the rest of the field are pretty much all together now and that makes it a very interesting race at the end of the sort of uh, course where we come down to the last couple of furlongs if we're still set up in a similar way but we've made up some ground on the rest of the field and the rest of the field's kind of as close as they are now we could see a seven way fight for the line and that could be a very very interesting proposition Wildcat Magic still leading him out. All that jazz de V is in second with Macy Ray now just on the inside trying to reclaim second space a little bit there. Then Medusa, Yolo, Lindy and Ren Jetta with a great jump there, Ren Jetta. Or Arlene Jetta, probably, now I think about it. Danny Girl still at the rear, but now only about a length back. Almost close enough to bite that tail if she was so inclined. A decent jump there. Nothing too spectacular though. We are under 10 furlongs. We have got three more jumps. Four more jumps. Actually, to do here. Now we're starting to make a little bit of a move up. Medusa in our sights. Yolo Lindy not too far ahead. Then it's Arlene Jetter on the inside. Macy Ray in third and Wildcat Magic and all the Jazz de V are battling for first almost side by side 
as we run down this hill under seven and a half from home poor jump by us great jump by all that jazz the v decent from macy ray as well getting up into the mix at the front of the race gotta love the undulating courses it really puts the horses to a test going uphill then downhill and jumping as well you're not jumping on a flat you're jumping on an uphill downhill that can make all the difference in the world sometimes five furlongs from home we are still detached at the rear we need to start making our move we do move to the outside of the course though four and a half furlongs as we run this uphill climb here on the turn and here comes the effort yolo lindy medusa and ourselves all trying to get into position not a great jump from us there looks like yolo lindy got a good jump as we approach three furlongs and the final jump this is pretty much what i wanted to see everyone almost in a line coming down now two and a half furlongs we're just gonna take the lead now as we come downhill one good jump could see us win this race might not be good enough there well cap magic medusa now making a move but we're gonna push out here downhill into the last furlong we're streaking away and there's no late challenge no one's gonna come and claim a win and we cross the line in first place and so we gained about 86 nearly 87 grand we lost about 103 i think on the first betting so we're still down a little bit we are still down a little bit but that was a good run there i like the way we did that although we were a little bit far behind and we were a little bit agitated so we could probably do a bit more there we could have settled better few things went wrong but we still come up with a win and that is a highly impressive race under those conditions i'm very very happy there so let's see what we've got eighth of november That could be a tough race. White becomes a looks to be a nice horse. And that could be more up our pace. That could be more up our pace. So let's put in there then for the third race of this video. As we move back towards 300,000 not really enough to buy anything important like the breeding barn and not enough for me to want to go to an auction and try and splurge at the moment if we can get up to about three quarters of a million or six hundred thousand or so then i might think about the breeding facilities but i want to keep about a quarter of a million in the bank after buying it so we do need that substantial chunk in there then we can buy bad horses just to breed to sell the progeny and then we can start looking at quality horses to put in the breeding barn and get ourselves good quality horses to race but really until we get more horses we don't need any of these you know the horse transporter or the vans we don't need quarantine or an extra feed barn if we don't need these then the car park is superfluous right now the field space and small, small barn just aren't needed either so you know really until we're able to buy that breeding barn nothing else is going to be truly needed so it's all about earning that money as best we can 19th of november then let's see what we can get done not a great first race little bit behind things which was uh you know i was kind of expecting but still it wasn't great to see but a nice second race there where we actually finished very strong and managed to get a good good lead by the sort of first uh sorry the last furlong 
more of the same there would be really really nice but we are top rated and you know a lot of people are carrying extra weight so we're pretty much top rated low weighted and that's a great combination to have we are also not agitated the tipsters say all the jazz de vie and life on the row i'm not too worried about those horses we're parading well and fit so not a great not a great paddock there like to see a little bit more sometimes but overall it could have been a lot lot worse So we are then the third two mile four furlong class four juvenile hurdles for three year olds and i believe we've raced only against other fillies so that's going to be interesting a couple of famous horses in here not famous but horses we do know we're here on the inside not a bad start we're probably going to get held up a little bit and there we go dropping off to the back I'm a craze is there, Macy Ray, Wildcat Magic, we know those two. Bin in Heaven, Life on the Row, we know a little bit. All that jazz de vie as well. Decent jump by everybody. Love Forbidden just ahead of us, and then Ideal Helen just behind us at the rear. Does look like a fight for second place. But I'm a craze is gonna lead us out here. Decent jumps all round again, nothing too spectacular 16 and a half furlongs now we're coming up to jump 3 of 11 so that will make it a quarter way through the stages here and let's just see how we go let's move on the leaders here just to find the jump and get a good clear view seems pretty decent there seems pretty decent wildcat magic now trying to make a move up with bin in heaven as well the rest of those front runners not wanting to leave anyone behind an oh ideal hell in there clips that fence maybe maybe is now out of the race or will soon be she's still going at the moment but not really going to be in contention with that and yeah let's we'll switch views just so that we don't have to deal with going behind the scoreboard in that fashion 12 furlongs to go jump 5 of 11 and we're now just passing love forbidden the front pack there though very tight at the moment all the jazz of the Life on the Row, Wildcat Magic, Macy, Ray, uh, Bin in Heaven, and I'm a craze there just ahead of us. But a good jump for us. That gives us a little bit of distance over Love Forbidden and gives us the freedom now to choose our own path to catch this front group. And a decent jump again by us. Life on the Row, a little bit of a poor jump. That might just help us bridge the gap to this front pack. It's Amma crazed and been in heaven now, side by side at the front. And it's a poor jump by us there. We seem to be held up in the air. So currently, sitting in, I believe, seventh place. There's pack of six ahead of us. Love Forbidden just behind us, about a length or two lengths maybe. And then another two back to Ideal Helen. Seven furlongs to run and only a few more jumps. Coming up here to 8 of 11. Good jump for us, please. Not a bad one. Not a great one for anyone in front of us either. Looks like we got a little bit of distance there over Love Forbidden, which is always nice as well. Wildcat Magic now contesting the lead. Up there with Bin in heaven between themselves. And I'm a crazed who's still technically in first four and a half furlongs we have moved to the outside we are trying to make a little bit of ground up here and now we head towards the rail and now back out as we come round the pack passing wildcat magic passing all that jazz de vie life on the row been in heaven macy ray 
Onyama Cray is ahead of us. Here comes life on the road, though. Two and a half furlongs, fast approaching. What a jump, what a power. We're into the lead there, leaving people in our dust with two furlongs left to run. Danny Girl is showing why she is favorite for this race. A decent jump there. Life on the Road didn't get a great jump themselves. We are going to push out now with one furlong left. Streaking forward for the line. Danny Girl is going to take this race by quite some distance. Nice little run there in the second and third races of her young career. And there we go. It's another juvenile win. Absolutely fantastic. Life on the Road and all that jazz de vie just behind but uh, that was a fantastic fantastic performance we're able to book the good races we're able to do what we need to do and uh, so far it's working out guys so far it's working out that first race not great let's face facts you know we were a little bit behind and she likes firm ground that was firm ground since then we've run on soft ground twice but our rating is good you know a third place and two wins is good we were even excitable for that first win overall i think we're running very very nicely this season i'm uh, i'm very very happy we're not gaining potential at the moment or gaining ability to fill out our season potential but the stats there the bars aren't too bad the bars here aren't too bad and they should get better we've got you know good training on-site training we've got all the upgrades that should help us out in terms of what we're able to get done with uh you know improving the starting improving the jumping improving the stamina with the you know the swimming pool and whatnot so i'm fairly happy there with everything we've got set up and danny girl looks to be a horse that could be an interesting choice we sold one horse which made over half a million we kept the one that was excitable but also the one that seems to be the best racer early days so that's going to be um something i do enjoy watching how she progresses and if we can start earning some money to get things built so let's see a little jaded that's okay we're not being told that we can't race anymore and let me just look here for another decent juvenile race yeah there doesn't seem to be many large fields which i'm not a huge fan of voodoo charm is up there that could be an issue that could be a test Ooh. do we go for something like that maybe possibly i think so i think that's the next test actually running against a good rated horse so that's what we're going to open up the next video with 17th of december a date i do appreciate and danny girl with two wins from her last two races and never outside the top three can she continue it can she continue to grow and can we do anything we return to ascot and let's find out until then no guys thanks very much for watching i hope you enjoy this series i know some of you wanted to see more of the jump series um you do enjoy from what i've heard the start it mod series but you know a couple of you out there like to see me race in britain in a jump save so we started this back up i hope that we can get a bit of success and so far so good so if we can earn some more money and get the facilities rounded out breeding program underway and start producing our own horses we might be able to have a shot at some of the big races you know the the grand national for example so let me know what you think what should i do what have i done right what have i done wrong do you disagree with me selling that other horse you know who looked decent um or was the money i got good enough let me know comment section below have your say and until next time though guys 
Take care.